I'm Aditya Prakash, and uh, I'm senior DevOps engineer working here at Geeky Ants. And my topic for today will be deploying AppStack to Firecracker micro VM infrastructure. So I'll be starting with comparison of this Firecracker micro VM infrastructure with some traditional ways of deployment. Then how did we start working on it? What are the tools that we here at Geeky Ants use to deploy this particular infra? And how do we design the infrastructure? over uh, using uh, Firecracker microviews. So to begin with, uh, let's start discussing at some of the traditional and common ways of deployment. As you know, the most usual common ways are basically a VM deployment and a container infrastructure. So as soon as, say, virtualization came into picture, the first thing we started doing was setting up small VMs onto an underlying OS system with a hypervisor layer in between to talk to the kernel of the underlying uh, node. So this is how the infrastructure looks like. We have a hypervisor layer, and on top of it, we have various guest OS, which has its own sets of binaries and libraries, and on top of which sits an application. So it comes with some advantages, the advantages being enhanced security because of the isolation between apps and predictable performance. Though it also has some disadvantages, being improper uh, resource utilization. Uh, how do we adhere to that? Is, say for example, this particular app three is not using all the resources that has been assigned to it right at the beginning. So because of which improper resource utilization will take place. And if app one requires some more amount of resources from the infrastructure, it cannot be transferred to it. So again, because of the guest OS present here for each of the VMs, uh, we see a longer provisioning time. Then came in a phase where people were not so much into security, but wanted things to boot up at a faster time, wherein came the container infrastructure. So a very similar to what we saw in the VM stack, we have an operating system, a container engine in between, commonly referred to as the Docker engine or the Docker daemon, on top of which sits the binaries and libraries, and on top of which sits our application. So basically, these containers that are running on our underlying node share the resources. So definitely, it solves the problems of faster boot up times, but again, comes with a disadvantage because of the resource sharing is less, less security, less isolation. And also, we found out that for stateful applications, these are not giving a very good performance on production levels. Uh, stateful application being those applications which you know which store our data like the database, the Redis clusters, and stuff. So then came in Firecracker. AWS introduced uh, Firecracker back in uh, 2018. And uh, AWS Firecracker is the underlying concept that AWS Lambda uses. And uh, AWS claims that they are able to handle trillions of requests for hundreds of users every month just with the help of this concept. So what basically is Firecracker? So as it's written here, Firecrackers enables you to deploy workloads in lightweight virtual machines called micro VMs, which provide enhanced security and workload isolation over traditional VMs while enabling the speed and resource efficiency of containers. So what exactly is Firecracker? It brings in best of both of the worlds. Brings in best uh, the security features it inherits from the VM deployments and the fast boot up times from the container infrastructure. So basically, how exactly does Firecracker implements this? What Firecracker does, it takes a VM and removes all the guest level functionalities and also a few of the drivers, because of which the size drastically reduces. And this not only comes with the advantage of redu reduction in the size, also what we are having is we are having less surface on which the security attacks can take place. So we have faster boot up times, and also a uh, uh, secured, in, secured in, uh, infrastructure in which we can go ahead and deploy our applications. So let's you know deep dive bit into what the Firecracker infrastructure looks like. This image I've taken directly from the AWS docs. So as you see, there is a bare metal server that is our underlying node on which uh, sits our KVM and on top of which inside the user space, we have multi-tenant micro VMs we can boot hundreds and thousands of multi-tenant micro VMs on a single particular node, similar to that of a container. Now, exactly what are the other advantages that Firecracker is providing? How does 
an external user or client interact with the firecracker system so firecracker provides uh, you know its own restful apis which has connections with rate limiters so that when uh, we boot say a micro vm we can at the time of booting we can specify the amount the type of network on which the vm needs to go and the amount of stor storage that is assigned to it also uh, with its metadata service uh, restful apis can be able to talk to the guest os and container workload so as i discussed the security end of firecracker firecracker enables another layer of security that what you can see here is a jail barrier which sits uh, outside the virtualization barrier say due to some activity some hacking activity a person is able to break your virtualization barrier still a jail barrier provides as a second line of defense uh, to your current running infrastructure so as i said uh, it has advantages over our traditional deployment methods for example it's lightweight and fast uh, as uh, lightweight and fast as compared to the normal vm stack it's secure as compared to the container infrastructure and moreover it provides us with a api driven management to boot up micro vms so how did we how did we exactly start using firecracker micro vms in geeky ants so uh, you can go ahead and boot the firecracker micro vm from scratch but uh, there comes a tool uh, right in the beginning which fast discussed about open nebula so we started using open nebula so i'll show what open nebula is open nebula is a powerful and an open source platform to build and manage enterprise clouds for example you want to have a data center of your own you want to have different types of hypervisors on those hypervisors the micro vms or say for example the vms that you are booting you want to have granular control over each and every component like the cpu the storage the type of disk that is attached or even the type of network everything can be properly managed with the libraries open nebula provides it's very easy to install you can go ahead and install it using yum or apt get based on the operating system you have been working on so let's have a quick overview of how the open nebula structure looks like we have an open nebula infrastructure which allows us to have shared networking and storage resources for all the vms that we are booting it has uh, availability of all the different types of popular hypervisors be it the lxc kvm or firecrackers uh, if you don't want manual process it has its own providers given by terraform kubernetes ansible and docker entire process of booting of the architecture can be taken place with the providers that uh, terraform and ansible provides there is only one built in tool that's given here uh, we'll go into a uh, deeper context into this as to what are the key components open nebula is providing us so let's start discussing that uh, open nebula sunstone open nebula sunstone is nothing uh, you know but a web based management ui for us it gives us anything and everything that we need uh, on our infrastructure we can manage uh, everything right from the data center to everything down to the micro vm say for example you need a network system just for your micro vms you can handle it using the sunstone uh, gui you want you have different clusters say a cluster in india another one in germany another place another one in somewhere else else part of the world you can handle all the data centers and clusters using open nebula sunstone uh, or you can have networking modifications right on the data center level as well using open nebula sunstone open nebula fire edge is nothing but an advanced version of the uh, sunstone gui again comes in with features where we can provision open nebula clusters then comes in open nebula gate uh, the one gate server say whatever information right at the beginning to boot up small micro vms are present on the 1d master node how do we distribute it to different nodes how do micro vms take up that information and boot up on all the different underlying nodes uh, this is done with the help of open nebula gate and open nebula flow is a smart tool which helps us start and stop micro vms on the open nebula infrastructure uh, if having a confu confusion you can uh, take an example underlying system is very similar to any other uh, you know container orchestration tool like say docker swarm or kubernetes wherein you have a master node you can go ahead and keep attaching small and various nodes to it keep increasing your cluster size and open nebula master the 1d master will be smart enough to distribute the load of all the micro vms across all nodes 
So the key components of Sunstone, as I discussed, you can have any and every type of virtual network setup uh, on the micro VM using uh, the Sunstone. This the storage tab is where you define whether you want you keep your OS images, you keep your Docker containers, Docker image path of Docker images, volatile and non-volatile disks. Templates are what you can do is you can create customizable templates. Say every time you don't want to boot a VM right from scratch. So you can have ready to go templates and using those templates, you can go ahead and boot micro VMs and instances is something where all this information gets aggregated to a boot a VM and dashboard is something. What you see is all the information about the current running cluster on this particular UI. How open Nebula has uh, helped us as geek at geeky ends. Uh, I mean, if more, let's shift the topic a, a bit out from firecracker. Uh, right now at Geeky Ants, we have set up our own data center and because an open nebula has helped us a lot, we have a series of big underlying machines and on top of which we are, uh, say running 50, 60 UAT and QA level projects of the clients we serve. So, and it has also proved to be very cost effective for us because, uh, until say, until the last quarter, what we were doing was we were buying uh, provision servers from various cloud providers, mostly Hetzner. So right now, just with the one-time setup, we are able to completely remove that monthly cost. Also, uh, it, it has been a huge learning experience for us. Immense granular control is something that I said earlier is what Open Nebula is providing us, uh, right from the OS image to the networking to the entire cluster. And lastly, say, because I said we are running a lot of projects of clients, so Open Nebula solved a very big problem for us. It, it provides its own billing component because of which we just need to set the stats and we can go ahead with it. Now, uh, the main part of the talk, how did we design a basic infrastructure? Uh, this is a very high level diagram. I'll go deeper into it in the uh, forthcoming slides. Uh, see, for example, an internet and we have a proxy server present here. The all, entire communication of all the application stacks that are present inside the open nebula infrastructure goes via this particular proxy server. And uh, this is a proxy server, which points a wildcard on a domain mapping of a wildcard on say any of the DNS providers we use, be it Cloudflare. And this is a health monitoring uh, service. Uh, this is a USB of uh, this particular architecture. I'll discuss in detail about it later. So external proxy server, I would like uh, you are, uh, I would like you guys to pay attention to the various networking interfaces that we have attached with these net basic networking interfaces. We are able to, you know, uh, bring in security to our application. So the proxy server, first of all, it's just a proxy server. Say for example, Nginx is something external Nginx, and this is something that talks to the, uh, internet. So this needs to be a bare minimum uh, server with, with bare minimum specs. Say for example, a T2 micro on AWS, something similar to that. Because it only has Nginx running onto it, it has a public IP because with which it talks to the internet and a network NIC card one with which it talks to the underlying application stacks. Let look, let's look, let us look at the international uh, in, internal application stack design. So externally we have one service router Service router is the entry point for each and every application stack that is running on Open Nebula. It has two network cards attached to it, NIC1 and NIC2, and all the other applications cannot be accessed anywhere outside because of only internal communication happening only with the service router using NIC2 uh, network card. And all the log aggregation is something that is uh, going on to the service router where we collect it for monitoring and analytics purpose. So understanding the components of the service router before I jump to service router, I would uh, like to say that open nebula itself provides its own service routers. If you just need, you know, a basic networking entry point to your application stack, you don't need a custom solution for this. You can use something that is by default provided by open nebula. But actually we needed some custom solutions to run on our service router because of which we had to build our custom one. So first of all, this has the Nginx, the main Nginx component, wherein the server name will be the fully qualified domain name of the entire application stack. As I said earlier, we wanted logging. So we had set up a 
basic logger app which collects data from all the underlying stateless and stateful application. Uh, this acts as an internet gateway to the entire application stack because of which we are able to understand the network bandwidth consumption and help us understand uh, network chokes or issues that are coming up. Next, we discuss this and how to boot stateless applications. So you might be thinking how to boot stateless applications. Uh, stateless applications are your front end and back end applications, ba basically your code. So not much effort to be put there. Uh, at boot time, just specify the Docker image specify the networking, specify the amount of storage and the networking you want to attach. Within a few seconds, your micro VM will be fired up. Then comes how to set up stateful applications, your databases and stuff. For this, maybe I won't recommend going ahead uh, with, say, Docker. You can, again, similar to a router, keep templates available for different databases. Say, for a MongoDB, you have a separate template. For Postgres, you have a separate one. And for, say, MySQL or Redis cluster, you have a separate one. So using those templates, you can fire up stateful applications. And here you go. You have an entire application stack booted up. Uh, let's quickly jump back to the health monitoring service, which I was discussing uh, as to how, why, did, why do we do that? Because see, if you mask this particular point, the health monitoring service, this looks very simple to maybe say a Kubernetes cluster or any random load balancer involved application stack. So basically what this health monitoring service does, we took the idea from fly.io and tried to develop uh, something of our own. And this is still a work in progress for us guys. Uh, so this is one of the most exciting features of our infrastructure. What this does is say, for example, you have three application stacks running here. And uh, this, the application stack three is something that you maybe use once a month or maybe you don't use it much or it has gone into dormant state and you, but somehow due to some decision making you don't want to remove this application stack from your infrastructure so what health monitoring service will do it will monitor the amount of traffic that is being received by this particular application stack and it will simply go ahead and power off all the micro vms so the advantage of this is when you power off it will release all the, all its resources and uh, uh, you these resources can be used by some other application stack improving the health of your system and say for the next time you boot and want to boot a new application or you just want to power on this, these are, these are very small firecracker micro VMs. Within seconds, you'll have uh, the application stack up and running. Also, uh, this is, uh, we still haven't uh, moved to that part, but this is the service where we'll be running our scale in and scale out policies. As to based on the incoming traffic, we'll scale out uh, the number of instances of uh, one particular application stack. So I believe uh, in the forthcoming days, my firecracker micro VMs will be something that, you know, completely overpower the container infrastructure and the VM deployments. And we'll, uh, we ask, I mean, I would recommend not to move into production with this as of now, because we ourselves are in the QA and UAT, uh, deploying QAT, QA and UAT and pre uh, projects of our clients on this. And we'll be happy to collaborate if you start working on this. Uh, thanks a lot, everyone.